Hello everyone, Horseman here, and today I'm going to be bringing y'all part 3 of the Necromancer beta of uh, my little video series. Um, I just wanted to uh, show you guys some more gameplay as I progressed through the levels here, and uh, got a chance to more or less experiment with some of the uh, abilities that were granted in this beta. Um, just to give you an idea of what I'm working with right now is I'm working with Corpse Lance, which um, is an ability that I find very amusing. Any corpses that are still left around on the battlefield, you can literally use as weapons. Uh, the character will cast an animation or um, will do an animation cast that um, makes the corpse explode and send projectiles towards your intended target. And uh, it's got a pretty good range on it. Um, here, I'll show you. There's the corpse and... And there you go. And what's nice about this ability is the fact that it doesn't actually cost any of your uh, primary resource, which is down here, Essence. Um, and the reason why that's so awesome is because you can use it pretty much just as long as you have bodies on the floor. Let the bodies hit the floor. Let the ah, shut up. Bad joke. Anyway, uh, what's also great about this is that as you kill stuff, more bodies hit the floor. So uh, essentially, it can be somewhat of an unlimited resource, um, but of course, if when you're taking on higher um, level enemies or uh, champions or elite packs, you're going to be using a lot more of those corpses than you're going to be generating. So something to think about, uh, and that's also why it's not my primary uh, damage dealing uh, ability. Okay. Uh, the second and the number two button down there is going to be my uh, command skeletons. The, as you can see, I've got seven skeletons that come to my aid. Um, they fight for me. Um, and for the most part, I don't control them. Um, the big difference between how you control pets in uh, this versus the um, witch doctor is that you do get an active ability so in this case, I get to command my skeletal minions to attack the target, increase their damage. So uh, what that looks like is that in this case, they go into a frenzy, periodically raise skeletons from the ground. I'm sorry, uh, commander skeleton minions attack the target uh, and increase their, um, their damage. But I also have a curse here. It's a crippling curse that kills enemies with less than 15%, but also cursed enemies take an increased damage from my minions, which is the rune that I'm using. The next ability in my four slot is the Bone Armor. Um, right now I have the rune for increased damage. What that does is it, it, it says that it rips the bones out of my enemies and it essentially puts on an armor for me. Kind of like how when you use uh, Akarat's Champion, it makes you all big and bulky. Well, it kind of does the same thing. Here, I'll show you. It applies the uh, armor onto my body and it's really cool looking. <clears throat> uh, right there, I just used the frailty, and uh, which means that my uh, bad or my skeletons are going to do a little bit more damage. the The, pri the primary uh, resource generator that I'm using um, is called Grim Scythe, and I'm using the dual scythes uh, rune, which, uh, as you saw takes two scythes and summons them and uh, it also kind of gathers them brings them all to me for uh, uh, some close quarters combat which is nifty the bone armor does need to be reapplied and it depends on how many enemies that are affected will depend on how many stacks of that armor you receive and it is only uh, available for a limited period of time my primary spender is also going to be Bone Spear, and right now I have the, uh, it says the damage is increased for each enemy if it passes through. It's the Blighted Marrow. So as you can see, I just used it again, and um, I now have eight stacks.
And as you can see, also, uh, when I used the bone armor on just the one character, I only got, or the one bad guy, I only got the one stack. can definitely see how making a pet kind of build would be absolutely fantastic and I think that might be something I'll shoot for when the time comes for this to go live or when I get to 70 I would love to try out some stuff uh, but more importantly I would definitely like to see what type of uh, sets that we're gonna get for the necromancer before you know really deciding what I think would work well together and hopefully this beta is gonna help kind of determine that a little bit The only thing I don't like about the uh, Grim Scythe here is that it doesn't have, yeah, I mean it's actually got quite a bit of arc, I mean that's one thing that's great, uh, it does have a 180 degrees arc. Um, this particular one, the dual size, you know it's all great but I think it could be better to be honest and I would love to try out some more. So this one is what I'm going to try out, um, the Cursed Scythe. Enemies have a chance to be inflicted with a random curse and I can see how this could be very beneficial to anyone playing some type of melee spec because applying one of the curses is pretty significant especially when you think about what types of uh, curses we do have I mean let's take a look real quick so the curses that we have so far is decrepify leech and frailty to Decrep de uh, decrepify a crippling curse that reduces the enemy units movement speed and damage done so of course um, Combining this with the Bane of the Trapped might be very beneficial, and some of the rooms that we have are fantastic. Cursed enemies have a chance to be stunned. Increase the potency of the movement speed reduction. Great. Um, so, uh, especially for a higher gris when you're trying to get away from, from those little shits that won't stop jumping on top of your face. That's great. Gain movement speed. Uh, increase for every enemy curse for a short time. Again, it's great for getting out of sticky situations. Damage reduction uh, increase, but no longer reduces movement speed. So, I mean, you get a trade-off here. Do you want um, to be tougher, or do you want things to be slowed down a little bit? I guess that depends greatly if you're going to be um, a, more of a melee spec, or if you're going to be a ranged spec. Um, Leech, we have the curse the target area. Cursed enemies have a chance to heal the attacker when they are struck. Okay. Transmittable. Enemies that die while cursed will spread the curse. Sounds like a witch doctor type of um, curse or poison or whatever it is that they have. Each cursed enemy increases your life regeneration. Whenever a cursed enemy dies, your potion cooldown is re uh, reduced. That's nifty. Whenever a cursed enemy dies, you are healed based on your life per kill. Okay. And the one that I'm using now, Frailty. I had scent of blood. Volatile death. Cursed enemy explode on death. Becomes an aura. Gain essence when cursed enemy dies. So those are pretty neat. Early grave. Now triggers a higher enemy health, but costs health as well. Nice. And I think I just did something I shouldn't have done.
Okay, so now I'm going to be going with more of a range build. In the previous part of this video, I was kind of going more melee and whatnot, and I don't really think that's going to be the way I go. I really like pets, and I really like staying at a distance, and I think a lot of that has something to do with the fact that I just came off of a wizard. So what I got going on here is Command Golem with the Bone Golem. Um, uh, rune. I really like it because he has an awesome active ability that not only grabs bad guys, but it also drags them with him in this little tornado, a little ball tornado, and then roots them in place there where you can do some good AoE or you can get your other pets in there to do also uh, more damage. Um, I also have command skeletons with uh, the active ability um, which freezes the target that I tell him to go and attack. And then I also have a frailty with the scent of blood, which enables my pets to do more damage. And I love that. Much like the wizard, I've got a teleport called Blood Rush, where I do get a chance to go across the map and whatnot. Um, and then for every single bad guy that I teleport through, I gain health for that. So if you're in a sticky situation, you're surrounded by mobs, you can teleport, gain health, and GTFO. So it's, a, it's kind of a win-win-win-win. Okay, the uh, ranged ability is Bone Spikes. This is my essence generator. It generates uh, 24 essence, but it's also going to give me some health, which is why I need it because of Bone Spear. This, blown, uh, this Blood Spear that I have uh, th attached to the ability uh, does extra damage, but at the cost of a uh, fairly significant amount of health. But uh, I want to make sure I, I can get that back again. So the, for the passives that I'm using, um, I'm going to be using Commander of the Dead, which uh, the essence cost to Command Skeletons and Cooldown Command Golem are reduced by 30%. Swift Harvesting, which increases the attack speed of my Bone Spikes. And I'm going to go ahead and use Eternal Torment, which uh, my curses cost 50% less and last forever. I don't have to reapply, so that's pretty awesome. I could also use this one here. I deal 1% increased in, uh, damage for every 2 yards between uh, you up to a maximum of 50%. So it's much like the Zay's uh, gem. And uh, it's something I will definitely think about uh, maybe tinkering with. Uh, let's do that right now. I'll uh, replace uh, Swift Harvesting with Serration to see uh, see how that works out. Okay, so I'm going to be uh, going through with this. Rift real quick, all the way to the end. I absolutely love <laughs> the Bone Golem's ability. I mean, I not only does it look just actually really funny, but um, it's very, very helpful. Again, I think this is going to be one of those abilities that if you're using a pet uh, type build, it's it's a must-have. You know, <laughs> its CC features are just so great. I mean, 
I'm in love with it. <laughs> it looks like a, a moving uh, garbage disposal. <laughs> I just think it's fantastic. Again, uh, using your your command skeletons is also a great way to get them just to simply focus on the target. I mean, as you saw there, they were just trying to go every which direction they're not quite as refined as the pets that the witch doctor has i mean at least you know playing the zoon and masa set um quite a bit I, I never felt like my uh the fetishes were doing something that i didn't like i truly did not want them to do whereas uh, your your skeletons are going to attack everything that is that they just like they give no fucks i mean just so you know they don't care what they're attacking so just keep that in mind, um, because they will. If, if something's within their range, they're they're gonna attack it with uh, without thinking twice about it. And um, being able to get them back on target, because uh, for instance, the last uh, Rift Guardian that I fought, I did find that they just decided not to really follow the instructions that I wanted them to do. They, they weren't fighting the Rift Guardian; they were trying to fight any. Uh, ads that may have been spawned or anything that might have been lingering in the shadows in the distance so it, it was good to be able to say hey 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 get back on target and uh, get them to attack exactly what you wanted dead Did you see the backhand on that golem? Again, it's a great combination. The frailty, you got your command, and you get your bone golem in there. It's a nice little combination that gets the, you know, you get extra damage, get them all nice and bundled up, and you just go to town, especially with your bone spear, which does piercing uh, damage. I mean, it just goes all the way through whatever it is that you're shooting at. So, again, bonuses. I think I need to go south. One thing I love about the wizard is the ability to teleport. So, the fact that you can get it again is pretty nice. Especially when you keep finding dead ends. Seriously, though. Give it more time. What am I missing? By right, that little corner right there. Give it more time. <clears throat> Jeez, of course. That needs to recharge. All right, this looks like a uh, the new map, which I like quite a bit. I mean, I th just think it looks nice. Yeah, it's your typical cat cave and whatnot, but I like the little extra stairs that have the candles and the little uh, monuments and whatnot so I like it and most uh, other iterations of this I've only ever seen it through a very 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 dense fog so it's actually kind of nice to be able to see it for what it is Keep 
forgetting forever means forever. Little dust devil. Okay. So now you got a chance to see my ranged build in action. I mean, yeah, it's nothing absolutely uh, spectacular and it's probably going to change greatly as I gain levels as I'm not even level 60 yet. And we all know that once you hit level 60, 61, and all, and all the way through 70, it starts to get a little bit slower, starts to get a little bit tougher. So things will more than likely change. And of course, as I hit 70, get gear and whatnot and, st and start going up to difficulty levels, things are most definitely going to be changing. But I will say, though, that this is a very fun build for uh, leveling. And I'm going to be probably likely sticking with it. Now, of course, you can change things around as necessary, depending on what it is that you want. Siphon Blood is also very good for ranged. I'm not a huge fan of it, but, you know, if you do want to uh, get some slows in there by using a suppressed or if you are having health issues and you just want and you want to be able to pull your health globes or pull a little bit more uh, health from when you're siphoning, you know, you have those abilities and you have that flexibility. If, blood, if Bone Spear is not exactly the type of ranged uh, spender that you want to use, there's a lot of different choices. So you're not necessarily um, confined to what I have here. Uh, different golems, uh, different things. Uh, next video, I'm going to be getting into uh, the Army of the Dead and Land of the Dead. And the reason why I want to uh, hit on these specifically is because they do each have a two-minute uh, cooldown. And I want to see if they're worth it. Right now, I've used Army of the Dead where it summons a massive army of death to pummel the target location. And I've seen it in action, and I'm not terribly impressed by it. So, I mean, even on an Elite Pack, it didn't kill it. And in my opinion, if you have a two-minute cooldown, you better kill it or it better be close to dead. But... Yeah, that was not what I was expecting for that. That was the first time I used that rune. Uh, normally, what it looks like, I'm not. That may have been a placeholder. That looked very odd. Um, I think that was a placeholder. Normally, what it looks like is you got a whole bunch of. I mean, we're talking hundreds of thousands of skeletons all converging on a single point, kind of like a singularity, but they're a very wide range around you, a good maybe 40 yards around you, all converging onto a single point. And again, the damage was not necessarily indicative of its worth. Uh, for a two-minute cooldown. Uh, same thing with uh, Land of the Dead. It's also got a two-minute cooldown where uh, all corpse skills can be used at will um, for the duration. And what it does is when you use it, it summons a graveyard, and essentially that's your corpse. That's your ammunition. So um, you can use uh, abilities like... Um, uh, corpse Lance at will for the duration of that land of the dead being down and that's great and all especially when it comes to single targets because if you're fighting a rift guardian you're probably not going to have a whole lot of corpse laying on the ground so having an ability like that to uh, pummel and use those tomahawk missiles uh, to pummel your enemy i think that's very useful but in again very singular type situations not something that's going to be uh, good for all situations you know especially in large crowds but again uh, further testing is needed for things like that um anyway uh, that's it for now um I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed the build that I uh, that I was using. Um, and uh, if you did like it, please throw this video a like and subscribe for more as I continue my progress through the Necromancer beta. I will definitely be posting more videos as new items come out. And when I hit level 70, I will definitely be going through each of the abilities and the passes to kind of uh, you know mess around, experiment a little bit more, different combinations, especially based on the, my stats and the any type of legendaries that I might have. So please, please, please uh, subscribe for more so you can uh, uh, follow my progress. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or anything that you would like for me to test specifically, please put it in the comment section below. Okay, until next time, Horseman out!